Hi everybody, in this video we're now going to look at long run aggregate supply. So this is looking at the long run, which in economics is when all of your factors of production are variable. They can be changed. You can have more land, labour, capital, entrepreneurship or less. And the long run aggregate supply curve is showing us what an economy is capable of producing in the long run. As again, this is really important. It's what they're capable of producing. It's not what they are producing. It's what they can produce. And this might remind you of a PPF diagram. On a PPF diagram, you'll remember that the PPF curve itself so shows the maximum potential output of two products, two goods, when all factors of production are fully and efficiently employed. And if you are producing at full capacity, you'll be on your PPF. You'll remember if you're inside the PPF, you're not using all of your factors of production fully and efficiently. And outside the PPF is unattainable because you don't have enough factors of production to be able to produce here. And in economics, there are two types of long run aggregate supply curve you can look at, depending on which economic school of thought you are in. So if you are a Keynesian economist, you think that your long run aggregate supply curve looks like this. If you're a classical economist, you think it is perfectly inelastic and it looks like this. As in the other diagrams we've done in theme two, we've got two labels here, price level, that's the average price level in the economy, and real output. And don't forget to label your curve, L-R-A-S. And it's important that it's the long run aggregate supply curve. And these are both showing what an economy is capable of producing. If we start off with the Keynesian one, and in the exam you might be told to draw a Keynesian one or a classical one, and you need to make sure that it looks the right way. If we're looking at a Keynesian one, this shows that it's possible to have different price levels according to what your real output is in the economy. And you can see here that as the long run aggregate supply curve goes along, we're making more real output. And therefore, as we come further along here, we're using more of our factors of production because you need factors of production to make your output. And the more output you have, the more factors of production you're using. And if you get to this point here, your real output can't get any higher. This point at the very completely, perfectly inelastic point of the LRAS, if we call this Y, here your real output can't get any higher than this. You've reached your maximum. So actually, if you had an equilibrium, so if we drew in our aggregate demand curve, if you had an equilibrium here, it's actually not possible for the output to get any higher than that, given the factors of production that you have in this economy. So actually, being at this point here, and being where the LRAS is perfectly inelastic, is just the same as being on your PPF curve because it's not capable of producing any more than this, this economy. It can't produce more than Y, or in this case, it can't produce more than being on the PPF. And for Keynesian economists, they think it's possible that we can have an equilibrium where we're not using all of our factors of production. So for instance, here, we have some unemployed or unused resources, and our output is not at the maximum that it could be at, our output's just here at Y1, and our price level is just at P. And we'll call that P1 to make it the same as this. So your price level is at P1. But over here, you're not using all of your factors of production. The reason that the LRAS curve for the Keynesians is shaped like this is because if we want to increase our output, we need to use more factors of production. To begin with, you've got so many factors of production that are unemployed or unused. If you produce more, to begin with, nothing happens to your price level. And that's because you've got so many factors of production that you can produce more without 
your costs going up as a business and therefore your price level stays just the same for the firms in the economy. They're producing more output, but the price level isn't rising. However, as you get further along here, your factors of production are starting to run out. So if you imagine in this economy, there are just two people left who are available to work, labour. If they're the only two people left in the country who can work, then if employers come to them and say, we want you to come and work for us, they will say, we'll work for you, but only for a very high wage. And therefore, when your factors of production are running out, that means that any increase in your output will cause the price level to come up. So if we were at AD3 here, you can see that at AD3, your output has increased to this point here, which would be Y3. And your price level has increased now. We're no longer at P1. We've come up to, all the way here, we've come up to P3. So Keynesians believe that as more factors of production are being used, the price level will naturally come up. And that's why the Keynesian LRAS curve is shaped like this. On the other hand, classical economists believe that all factors of production are fully and efficiently employed or used in the long run. So they believe that we have full employment, for example, of people in the economy. And this means that when we've got full employment, we are on this LRAS curve, we can only ever be at the maximum potential level of output, which is at Y here. Even if there's an increase in the aggregate demand and the AD curve shifts to the right, we can't have any increase in our output provided that our LRAS curve is here. So the only impact of an increase in aggregate demand is an increase in the average price level, otherwise known as inflation. And this means that they believe all of the factors of production are fully employed at all times. And you will always be at this level of real output. We haven't looked yet at moving our LRAS curve, increasing or decreasing our productive potential. But just looking at the LRAS curve just on its own with no shifts, you can see that the Keynesians believe that we can have factors of production unemployed, but the classical economists believe that we have full employment and all factors of production are being used at all times in the long run.